personality code, 28 innovative ways to identify and leverage your uniqueness. I'm Andrew Collin, being your host. Today, we have a very special guest, David, uh, Nicholas David Nan. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me on the show, Andrew. What are you looking forward to? This? Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm really excited. We, uh, You guys, this is going to be a little bit different because... Um, Nicholas is going to give us the the full thing about how to discover your your spiritual map of life using numerology. He's written an amazing book. Um, I'm going to introduce him in just a second, but this is going to be really exciting. Just off camera, he was double checking because he's going to be reading my chart and diving into this and how accurate it was, how he was able to point out things that took me so long to figure out I was blown away. So you guys are really in for a treat. Um, but before we go in, let me go ahead and introduce him. He's uh, developed this powerful, profoundly transformation, uh, transformative body of soul contract work at the center for conscious ascension in conjunction with, and I'm going to slide this, but help me out here. Nicholas, Dr. Almira. Yep. Ariel. Uh, ha Hello. Hello. There we go. Uh, they are regarded as the world's leaders in the field have, and have been working at cutting edge of raising human consciousness for over 25 years. His interview, uh, well, this interview will be based on 20 or 60 years of their combined experience in helping thousands of people around the world to understand their lives and body and express their higher consciousness and transmute their emotional separation programming, um, thus creating a more fulfilling, empowered, joyful, and conscious life. So Nicholas, thanks for hopping in here today. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to sharing this wonderful work with everybody in your audience. Yeah, I really am. And just curious, how did you get into this? Um, back in 1990, at the beginning of my spiritual journey, I was traveling around the world. And I landed in Phoenix, Arizona, and at a workshop, which I've been waiting a year to go to, run by Frank Alper, the founder of the Soul Contract work. Um, he called it the spiritual numeral numerology of Moses in those days. And as part of that seven-day workshop, I went to have a, a reading with him. And he took my birth certificate name, and he drew a star of David on a piece of paper, and he matched the sounds of my name with 22 different Hebrew sounds in the ancient Hebrew alphabet. And then within that alphabet, numbers are inherent within the letters. And he then did some maths for those numbers on the Star of David, and he explained my entire life in that hour, and it was one of the most profound moments of my life, I think, second only to the birth of my son, um, just complete awakening, just but like you had about 10 minutes ago, um, from a couple of minutes I spent explaining your chart to you, and ever since I had that reading, as he, he explained all the disparate crazy stuff that had been going on he showed there was an order to it and he showed that i was here to be a spiritual teacher and communicator and then i in that reading i decided i need to learn how to do this work i need to um, master this and so i asked him well when when are you teaching this frank he said well if you come to the next workshop carousel workshop in about six weeks i teach this so so i learned i stayed around in America for another six weeks and I learned the work and I brought it to England and I've been developing it ever since um, and I taught the first training in this work in 1994 to people who are interested I was up, up to that stage I was just giving readings and so it's been evolving for the past 34 years into this massive body of work with we have about nearly 300 practitioners um, who globally who who deliver readings to people to help them discover their spiritual map of life that hidden secret you know we as light workers are always searching there's got to be something more important than school work being a slave in the matrix and this is the answer this is the soul destiny the the hidden secret we're all looking for that conventional wisdom or lack of wisdom won't tell us um mm. and it's all about how to align with that soul destiny our real deepest soul drive the thing that really creates great fulfillment and it's been very true in my chart and i because of that i focused 80 percent of my effort on the 20 percent of stuff that matters i stopped doing all things that were, that were a waste of time 
looked mm. at the important stuff and my life was completely transformed and has been very fulfilling and challenging though in the process at least i know where i'm going which right a lot of humanity has no idea where they're going and they never find out absolutely and i'm so grateful that you've been in this body of work for so long and to me it seems like you've come to mastery and you're in your aligned path and this show is all about identifying ourselves who we are what's our strengths what are we really supposed to be doing here what's our aligned path and so um we just want to hear the whole thing i know that we've been hearing experts in many different walks of life sharing their unique system this is definitely a system i've i mean i heard of, i don't know how similar it is to just numerology maybe this is numerology but i just didn't go as deep into it um but i mean we would just like to hear how it is how it works uh, i know you have some examples we're going to do a whole thing and i think the demonstration of it will, will be, is what the people will want yeah well this this work finds finds you when the time is right if you're watching this particular show you come for a reason so it'll be no accident what is um, going to be revealed to you. And it's based upon the idea that sound is creative. And so this limited incarnation in the body here is just part of the learning process for your soul. And our souls have many incarnations on Earth. They come for about 48 to 72 rounds on Earth um, to learn in this particular school, this particular set of emotional frequencies. And so prior to incarnating, the soul looks at all its previous lifetimes and it will have particular themes that it will be pursuing in different ways through each lifetime as part of its progression. Because its aim of incarnating is to come into a dense physical body and re-experience different variations on those themes so it can increase the amount of unconditional love within it. So eventually it can graduate from the school of earth. And so... It chooses a particular name, which has a set of vibrations, uh, which are programmed into our DNA, our energy bodies, and into a substance called karmic matrix, which is like a gray cobweb substance. It sits at the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensional levels of our being. And it literally radiates out to the matrix. The film's a very good analogy for what's going on. And this, it actually, the matrix rearranges around the program you're radiating out to it. And by the law of attraction, it then creates your reality around you. And your reality will be completely different to someone else, even if they're in the same space, because they have a different con soul contract running. So in understanding our soul contract, we understand the, um, the attraction code within us that's creating our reality. If we understand what we're creating, then we can go and negotiate and work with it and change it. So some of the stuff, that karmic stuff that happens in our life, we can learn how to overcome it because it is very challenging down here. And the reason for that is this emotional intensity we experience while in a physical body is the fastest learning experience you can have for a soul. When we're not in the body, it's much slower. So even some, of, even though some of you may feel, God, I wish I hadn't come, wish I hadn't put my hand up to volunteer to come to Earth, you came because you wanted to grow and help others grow. Um, it's much easier and slower on the high dimensions, but this is, the, this is where the, all the action is on Earth. So in understanding our contract, we can actually get conscious of what our ego construct, which is created by the subcontract, is creating for us and how to work with it consciously rather than letting the ego unconsciously run our lives and create a lot of stuff which we don't really like. Because initially we get all the stuff we don't want in life. That's all our karmic patterns because it's to get our attention. And what it's, the universe is telling us is that this is what I want you to learn. The soul is literally telling you, this is what I want to learn. So we get the painful stuff first. And most people turn away from that. And therefore they get stuck. You notice how people who are not on the spiritual path get very stuck, get very old, get very bitter. Those of us on the path tend to get younger because we clear our emotional issues. We live healthily. We, we grow, grow in consciousness. And the purpose of this tool is to show you what is the karmic hard stuff you need to look at because if we turn our consciousness, our feeling consciousness into it, engage with it and feel it and transform it with healing, 
then we get the most important thing we came for, which is our gift of service. So it's paradoxical that our biggest challenges carry our gift of service. Like my challenges are, and, and my one of my, my current my current physical karmic pattern is to feel unworthy to be loved. But in turning into that and transmuting it and become worthy to be loved, worthy to be seen, that helps me become the spiritual writer and teacher that I am today. But if I hadn't engaged with it, I couldn't get to where I am now. But the journey of going from the negative expression of the contract to the positive in the karmic pattern is the whole purpose of me being born. And in my spiritual karmic aspect, it's about having a lot of disempowerment as a kid, moving from a place of feeling very much like a victim most of my life to becoming into my power that enables me to empower others to grow and awaken and gives me the energy to, to carry this mission out with my, with my the team in the Center for Conscious Ascension. So finding out what those karmic patterns are is vital to the mission, vital to satisfaction. I used to run a management consultancy based upon the self-contract reading work and Gallup did a poll and it was like 89% of people were emotionally disconnected from their work, which mm. allowing for the margin of error is pretty much most people who do a normal 3D job, which is pretty sad. They just do it because they have to pay the bills, got kids, mortgages, but not too happy. I used to do that about, how long ago was that? 27 years ago, I used to commute into London to the city to work and I would see the gray people. And I decided, well, I've had enough of this. In my I was at 37, I just had an epiphany one day. I can't do this anymore. It was like a what? cloud flew by on a summer's day, 200 foot long, that looked like an angel, the only cloud in the sky. So it was like the universe saying, Time to wake up. And yeah. six months later, I, I had I left that job to do what I'm doing now because I wanted to have a much more fulfilling experience of life. and carry out my soul's mission so yeah this work comes at the right time and if you're watching this then you're ready to hear what your contract's about and we'll cover some of that near the end so there how's that it's just to it's get beautiful us yeah i love it um but i mean a question came to me is what about the great people are they is that part of their mission they're supposed to experience that or you know what I'm saying? Like, and things were very different back in the fifties or the 1800s and stuff. Um, as humans evolve, is our contract more fulfilled or easier to fulfill or, um, is part of our soul contract sometimes coming to this life to experience the gray life? Initially, we're just, initially the majority, but 97, 98% of the population goes completely asleep to forget that they come from source. That's the whole idea. It's called a game of separation from spirit. And it's basically the creator. We are the creator creating. There's a spark of the divine of source in the, in the 12th dimension within each of us called the soul. But for the creator to create, it has to go to sleep. Parts of it go to sleep. And then in the game of separation is to see, can those parts awaken? Can they become conscious? Can they overcome the sense of being abandoned by source, by being born? Can they burn through their ego construct created by the soul contract and return home to source and consciousness? And the journey of returning from being asleep to being um, fully conscious and connected to source and moving up the dim high dim dimensions. We're in the third dimension here, so we've got about nine more to go. It takes, it takes a long time for civilization to ascend. That's the purpose of life. So we each are the creator creating through our daily lives. It's not some not some entitled old white guy sitting in a throne in the sky. It's us. We are the creator creating. And the purpose of the soul contract is to learn what is the optimal path for me, or for you guys watching, to get back to back to source ultimately. Because mm. it's actually the journey that matters. We we very much focus on trying to achieve things in a hurry in the West to get to the end point, which there isn't any ultimately, but it's actually the, it's the visceral emotional experience of returning to source, which is the purpose of life. It's how our soul learns through that emotional intensity. 
It's powerful. I, I'm sure everyone wants to know like how this specifically works. Like what are the mechanics and you know, how do you do your readings and how, how can we, if we're ready, right. If we're ready, we yeah. feel that. How can we, uh, you know, learn our soul path? Well, let's get into that. So I'm going to share the screen. So, okay. So, okay. The slides here. Which one I want? This one, this one. I um, want to have this one. So, a little bit more about what this work can do, then we'll, we'll get into the demo of it. So the birth name, birth certificate name, or the name you were given, if you don't have a birth certificate by your parent at the time of birth, creates your reality in each moment, in whatever language it's in. Mm. And the spiritual map of life, which is decoded from the, with the soul contract, it empowers you overcome your karma, express more of your talents, achieve your goals. And if you can consciously work through these, these guys here, it helps you manifest your soul life purpose to live a more fulfilling life. Mm. So let's just see how do we actually decode the name. So we use the Star of David here. As a gateway, it's a gateway or consciousness that we come in, uh, come into when we come to the earth plane. Because you just, they don't let anyone in here, you have to be ready at a soul level to cope with this range of frequencies. Because uh, you can't come in, like you don't go to high school when you're five, for example. Mm. So the way this works is that we have several aspects here. We have a large downward pointing triangle which represents the physical side of life. So now because we're going to talk about your chart in a minute, Andrew, you as Andrew Columbini are brand new as a personality. You've not existed before, but your soul has with many other lifetimes. So we're brand we create brand new personalities each lifetime. So you need to learn to walk and talk, get conditional responses, get up and running in life. So it's a formation of personality and our relationship to the outer world. Mm. And between the ages of 35 and 42 or younger, in your case, we have a spiritual awakening. The sixth cycle of seven years, this seven year cycles we work with. And so with that, we get restless. I mean, when was your awakening, Andrew? And if you feel there's got to be a lot more to it than, than, than the appears to me, than what I'm seeing around me. When was my awakening? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I don't know, like the, the pinnacle of awake. I could say my awakening was probably recently when I started losing all of my negative motivations and realizing what I really want. But the first time I, I like came into a way, I don't know. What do you define as awakening? Well, we were you no longer engaged with a three D world, and, and you were looking for a higher purpose. It's got to be oh. deep meaning for my life. You saw beyond the materialism and the external, superficial nature of the world to the a much deeper level. A greater, there's, there's a greater power at play here. Okay, well, I would say I saw that way early on, but not actually aligned to it till my Saturn return. So, like recently, I'm thirty years old, about a year or so is when I'm like, okay, I no longer actually want these 3d material things, but I've built this whole life in direction about claiming them and getting them, improving myself and, and whatnot, which is why I'm doing this work, these shows, because these different systems have helped me, but I'm thinking, well, now what? <laughs> and so I would say right now, really, it's when I had my awakening. So the awakening means that the spiritual triangle, the upward pointing one, is activating. And the soul is hoping that you built enough of the physical triangle to act as a foundation for the spiritual awakening. Hmm. And that's where we transition away from the material and superficial to the deeper soul drives or why we're really here. Yeah. Um, so what happens here is that um, 
mean, I transitioned at 37 out of the corporate world, but I'd already been on the spiritual path for about 10 years already. But I then I seriously got on to it by leaving that job, which everyone thought I was crazy doing that. Mm -hmm. So within each of these large triangles, these three aspects, there's karma, talents, and goals. And karma, as I said earlier, is a set of unresolved past life issues the soul puts in place to create the negative context of our life. And this also, oh, they're intentional. Oh, totally. It's yeah, not... you need you, okay. you need them. Otherwise, you wouldn't get your attention. Okay. Oh, yeah, because you need tension. So it's not like, oh, I did some bad deed in the past, and now I need to clear my karma. But it's like this karma was created so I can have the tension to want to create something. Yeah, to work, actually do something about it because it's starting to get a bit gotcha. painful or very painful. Gotcha. So the soul wants us to, I mean, about 80% of our issues we have come from past life issues which haven't been resolved because we'll often spend many lifetimes working through things. Hmm. So the karmic pattern here gets our attention and most people will turn away, which means the karmic pattern just stays and tortures us. We suffer. Can, can I pause you really quick? Yeah. It, what would family generational trauma play into this? It would it would be a known, it'd be known, there's different generations that will come through the family that'll be reflected in the numbers in the chart. Okay. Often you'll find in family lines that the same karmic patterns are repeated through the family. Often every second generation has the same karmic patterns. Right. I've studied systemic psychology and have a few experts on, for example, all men in the family get testicular cancer and you'll see trends like they're following this morphogenic field of the family or yeah. all women marry weak men because great, great, great grandfather did this crazy deed that they'd never want to marry a, a, an unpredictable man like that unconsciously, which affects the individual. So that would that be physical or that be karma? Um, yes, that'll it'll be it'll be in the energy of the contracts. Okay. But family family lines follow particular patterns over many generations until someone resolves it. Mm -hmm. Like you, someone who's conscious and has the tools, and then you'll probably end some of these patterns in your case. Mm -hmm. But that'll be shown in the numbers. So just, family trauma, generational trauma is is you you do have it in your chart. I'll show you in a little while. Okay, what that where that trauma comes from. Okay, so this is past life issues plus family issues will come into the karmic, karmic position. So the idea is to turn into it by using the physical talents, which are latent initially, and to um, activate those latent talents to overcome it. And if they're a good match, it'll transmute the karma layer by layer, and that'll become your positive gift of service. This can take a whole lifetime. Mm. This is the most important point I want to make today is that in transmuting that, then you get the good stuff. Then you get your gifts, you get a more fulfilling life. And you become one of those two or three percent of the people who are very satisfied with what they do in life on earth. And that's worth fighting for. Okay. Oh. And the physical talents act are activate. As they activate, that help and they get strong enough. That helps us achieve our physical goals, what gets us out of bed in the morning, what excites us about life. So the energy flows from physical karma to phys physical talents to physical goals here. And then from spiritual karma to spiritual talents to spiritual goals, same idea. But in this case, in transmuting the spiritual karma, this is how we open to higher consciousness. How we, as our ego gets clearer and we open our channel, we can cope with higher frequencies. This actually brings through the higher dimensional gifts we're here to bring to the world in whatever form that is. Okay, so there's everything to play for when you understand what this contract's about. So each of these six outer aspects when we become consciously aware of them we have time here and percentage complete. Normally you do this, it'll be very slow increase in the amount of percentage complete, but when you have this work it goes up like this. You go a lot faster. That applies to each of these. And when we had a certain threshold of completion of these six outer aspects, they feed into what's called our soul destiny or life purpose. OK? 
and this starts to manifest layer by layer. Okay, layer by layer, as we become strong enough in our in our consciousness, in our mind, so we're not tipped over by the karmic patterns of spirit. So the soul destinies are revealed to us layer by layer by layer, and the more we progress on the outside, the more is all the good stuff is revealed. And this is why life is never what we think it's going to be. Stuff just happens as you've noticed, which wasn't in the plan, supposedly in the conscious plan of the ego at all. But this is this is because these layers are being revealed. So the idea is to get very clear what these six outer aspects are and work on them with, with the right healing tools and processes, which is what we've developed with this work. And then you get the good stuff, the fulfilling soul destiny or life purpose starts to manifest. Okay. So you can think of this as like you're driving from, say, LA to New York in a car at night with the lights off, headlights off. You're not going to get very far. You're going to crash a lot. So what we're doing with this work is think of it as spiritual sat nav. We're switching on the headlights, we're putting on, we're putting on the um, satellite navigation on our phone, and we're setting the the direct the, the the destination to be New York as our sole destiny, for example, and we can see which way we are on the freeway. So you've got a much better chance of getting to New York now. In fact, you will get there if you keep at it. Mm. Okay, so this is a good analogy for life. So most people are going around with the lights off. <laughs> and it's very painful crashing all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's find out. Let's demonstrate how this actually works. So we pull up your chart here. What we've done here is that we have um, taken your name as on your birth certificate, Andrew James Colombini, and the software has matched it up to the equivalent Hebrew sounds. In this case, it's one for one, but sometimes it's different. And then because numbers and numbers and letters have the same symbol in in the soft contract system. We extract the Hebrew numbers, which are inherent within the system. And this is the major difference between normal, say, Pythagorean numerology in this form. And things like Pythagorean numerology, the numbers are allocated to the Roman alphabet. In this system, they're inherent within it, within the Hebrew. So it's a, it's a, it's a vast difference in what comes out. So basically, the 22 numbers in Hebrew, or 22 letters, represent the 22 movements of God in the creation of creation, God in the spiritual sense. So we're dealing with a very high frequency system that's not been diluted okay, at all in terms of its transmission, which is what we do at the Center for Conscious Ascension. We've aimed, we've aimed to keep it as pure as possible in the way Frank Arthur transmitted it to me. So then we take these numbers here, Hebrew numbers, and we Start allocating on the star David like 1, 14, 4, 1, 14, 4, 25, 6. Those of you watching this, you can generate your this chart here by going to our website, soulcontractreader.com, and you can just type your name in. Okay. If it's a non-English name like Spanish or French, just type it in as it's written. You'll still get a good, you get what we call an aspelt reading. Um because it's designed around an, an English to Hebrew translation matrix, but it still works well with other languages, as long as you can use the Roman alphabet with them. Um, so when we allocate the first six numbers, we allocate the next six. We just keep going around the star, David. So you, all you guys got to do is just tap it, type it in. You can get up to four free charts out of it, and you generate this chart. Okay, So it's subcontractreader.com. And then we do a bit of maths here. So say here, we add these numbers up. The software does it. 14 plus 1 plus 12 plus 10 is 37. And because we only have 22 Hebrew numbers, we need to reduce this to the first number between 1 and 22 because the soul of Moses channeled for about nine months through Frank Alpa the meanings of these numbers and the different aspects. So we... We, to reduce this to the first number between 1 and 22, we go 3 plus 7, whoops, 3 plus 7 equals 10. Here comes the left-hand number. 
1 plus 0 equals 1. It's the right-hand number. So we get a 10, 1 here. Okay. And so you're here to experience in spiritual karma the, ex the negative expression. It doesn't mean the bad expression, just the, the learning experience of a 10, pure 10 frequency and a pure 1 frequency. Plus all the blends in between. This is like having hot and cold taps in a shower. So at any given time in this lifetime, you'll be somewhere along that continuum there, Andrew. So that's how we get a, a 10-1 there. Okay, so physical karma, total 31. We get 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus nothing is another 4, so you get what's called a double number. This is called a combination number because there's two of them. This is one single number, the one frequency. It doesn't have this range of expression. It's very specific what it says here. And I worked all the other numbers out here accordingly. And then what we do is that we take the physical numbers, place them on the top half of the table, mm. spiritual numbers, place them on the bottom half. And we add them up. So this column, right-hand column is 25, left-hand column is 61. And then 6 plus 1 is 7, 2 plus 5 is 7. So the 7 goes and sits in the middle. That's the oldest thing. Let's have a little drink here. So you with me so far? Yeah. So in these channel symbols, like portals or gateways, they're going to tell me about your life. Hmm. So for this demo, we're going to talk a little bit about each number. What's the most important question you've got about your life at the moment, Andrew? And I'll start with that as a our entry gateway into the system. Most important question I have about life. Yeah, don't hold back. What's the most important question you have about life? About you personally. It can't be about relationships simply because we don't have the other person here. We don't mm -hmm. have the um, <laughs> I have so many questions. Just the one question. Well, the first question is, will I ever figure this it, this out? Well, we're and doing it now. We're doing it the now. The answer comes yeah. to it. Um, we'll figure out what the purpose of life is, actually. But um, I think really the question is, for me, is how, how can I live in alignment with what I really want? without feeling like I need to do something because I feel like there's there's things in my life where I just don't enjoy and I'm always questioned like am I supposed to just suck that up and do it and then the prize is on the other side or is it always going to be a cycle um is that what you mean by what's the question or like what's the question I have about what life means and whatnot yeah. Well, we can talk about the meaning of your life while you're here. That's a, that's pretty much the, the main question. And the rest is a detail in terms of getting there. Yeah. Okay. So, in physical karma, you have a four. And a four is learning to become worthy to see the flow of nature, flow of love, money, ideas. So when you were a kid, did you feel like you didn't get enough love? Or it wasn't enough money, or this just wasn't enough of something that you really wanted. Hard to say because I, I was an only child and my parents split. So maybe I didn't get the love that I wanted from two parents in the house. Yeah. But I did, but I did get like what I wanted and stuff. But I think what I really wanted was, yeah, just my parents to both be in the same household. Okay. So which parent did you live with most of the time? They split it up very evenly it was nearly 
perfect in how I sp spent my time. Okay, so this is about not getting enough love from the parent, parents. So not being worthy to receive enough love because they weren't, you didn't have them both together at the same time. Okay, and the the split is caused by this number, or you chose to experience the split, not saying it's your fault or anything, with this 10 here in spiritual karma. And that's about bringing in the balance of masculine and feminine aspects of God into your life. And your job is to reunite the split in a masculine and feminine in you that came that's triggered by the by the divorce. Okay. It's what you agree to at a soul level to experience with your souls of your parents. And this is the key to this entire mission, actually, resolving the split of your parents within you. Because how we choose to separate from Mother Father God in our in, the, in our ego is the journey to be our journey is to overcome that and reconnect to Mother God, Father God, and in your case, blend the two together. And that's the key to the mission. And that's the key to being come unified here. This is unity, power, and stability. This is basically opening up Mother, Father, God, bringing them in and bringing them to the world to be of service to others, which is why you're doing this show. You're here to use spiritual energies to serve others, but you need to before you can fully come fully into it, you need to have reunified that split within your psyche. This is the fundamental formative experience you came for. And the effect of that has been this physical karma. This is the major formative energy in your chart. And in this case, the physical karma is here so that you can feel worthy to receive that love from Mother, Father, God. Okay, and this will influence your cash flow influence er everything in your life so it's about being willing to receive whatever comes to you and accepting everything yes to the good stuff that turns up does do things do you have a feeling something's going to happen then it does you sort of felt it coming you can literally smell it coming down the road yeah yeah and it's very important when you sense something's going to come to always say yes unconditionally because you're saying to the universe hey universe i am feeling worthy I'll figure out what to do with this later, but I'm going to say yes. Wow. And when the universe sees, ah, Andrew said yes all the time, he feels worthy, have some more. So that's how more yeah. comes to it. If you say no, because you don't feel worthy, the universe says, oh, he's not feeling so worthy today. So we're not, we're gonna, we're gonna reduce the throttle the flow back a bit. You notice that happens? Always say yeah. yes. So the smallest of things could be a it could be a penny on the supermarket floor. Pick it up and put it in your pocket, that's yours. The universe is just testing you to see, are you worthy of it? Because what happens then is the bigger stuff starts turning out. Ah, ah, okay, yeah, that that that's a good statement there. I would say that is what's been stopping me and why I feel stuck sometimes because I don't either. Yeah, feel worthy to receive, and I guess what I'm telling myself is I don't know if I can handle all of that that's coming in. So I usually will basically stop three feet from a gold because i'm like i don't know about that next step just say yes this is about trust say yes trust because you'll trust. be challenged financially where you have to take a financial leap of faith okay mm -hmm. moving from california to florida was that a financial leap of faith not necessarily yeah have there been other financial leaps of faith where you knew what you had to do you should were holding back so you know oh, i don't know whether the money's going to come for this yeah that that did happen yeah. literally a year ago yeah basically to this day okay so what happens there have you seen the movie indiana jones the third one search for the holy grail uh it's been a long time yeah so remember he has to ask answer three questions to get across the infinite deep chasm to get to the night with the holy grail uh -huh. And then he figures out there's a pathway here. He has to have total trust and faith, walk into this infinitely across this infinitely deep chasm, and then he discovers there's an invisible pathway there. Because, but he had to take the first step. And only then the hand of God supported him. And that's you. And he throws dust when he gets to the other side, across it and says, ah, it's always the pathway was always there. I just needed to trust it. Yeah. So you're going to be presented with increasingly greater and greater challenges we had to take a leap of faith okay and then and after a while you'll see i ah, here, here comes another one. Oh my god it's a bit bigger than the previous one but i've seen this three or four times before so i know it's going to work 
a little part of you thinking, oh, I don't know, this time it could be just too much. But after a while you realize, okay, this is about the 10th time. So I know this will work. So let's just do it. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. then the flow gets bigger and bigger. So what this is about here. So can you read people's minds, Andrew? Or do you just know what's true and what's not? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel like I do. Maybe sometimes I feel like it's an arrogance, but I do think like I kind of do. Yeah, well, it's not really arrogance. It's 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 a very highly psychic energy. This is like a, a fetus. This is abstract abstraction. This is this is the pure etheric frequencies of spirit coming into the earth plane, out from the astral plane, coming into this reality to bring pure truth which is why you're hypersensitive to what's true and not true. You know if someone's telling a lie because you just feel it in your body because the frequency drops. And you know what's true because it's like, like this resonance. Oh, yeah, that's true. You just know in your body if it's true. And this is also, also why you can read people's minds because you're literally feeling the energy fields of what's going on for them. So this is saying that you're here to um, basically use your intuitive channel to guide you, guide, guide you through life. And if you follow that, things will work out. You don't have any, it's a very high frequency energy in the physical part of the chart. So you, you don't actually have a super strong physical talents, but follow your intuition and it'll work out. Mm -hmm. okay. And physical goals are the 22-4. And this is, this is about source. So the goal here is to open up, to blend mind, body, and soul and connect completely to source and then share it in completeness with the world because the fours are about sharing. So this is about, are you very versatile, Andrew? Versatile? Yeah, can you do lots of different things? Yeah. Yeah, this is because you're drawing on a multi-dimensional experience of the soul here to do that. <laughs> do, you have do you have any bad days where you feel there's no God? You know, you know consciously there is God, but you feel in your body, ego feels like there's no God today. I'm feeling a bit off the wall, a bit crazy. I, I mean, I, I just, yeah, well, I just feel like what's going on, what's happening. I don't know if I've ever said, I don't believe there's a God, but I probably maybe felt like. It's more a feeling. It's more a feeling. Yeah. In the body. Yeah. yeah. That's the day, uh, those crazy making days are when you, your ego feels there isn't God that day. But it, she'll be back tomorrow. Okay, so so this is about overcoming that and connecting to that source energy, and then bringing into completeness whatever people need. But like the show, mm -hmm. you're interviewing a whole range of people, having to adjust to everyone there to bring to help share the gifts that each of us have. Mm -hmm. So in spiritual talents, this is saying here. You're here to build a body of knowledge, a structure of knowledge to take. You're here to take all sorts of different ideas and concepts and form them into a unique structure of truth and develop emotional resiliency to support others to learn that truth. And you're sort of building a structure with the personality code of that for people to learn about who they are. The most important thing is self awareness, who we are. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's really where I think all paths are leading is that to create a kind of a system like this, a system of systems really to help yeah. people figure out their path. And the, and the two is a spring to support others, but also it's about a spring moving up and down. You're sitting on the spring and you're observing a situation. And if, and if, your, if your perception of situation is changing, that means you're moving up and down the spring. And if you act impulsively, when you're moving on the spring, you'll make a foolish decision. But if you wait till you reach maximum height and objectivity and see the truth of what's going on, you make a wise decision. So you're here to learn wisdom through impulsive action or things that are said impulsively. Has that got you in trouble in the past? Can you, I'm not quite understanding what you mean by... I hear what you're saying, but can you be more specific what you mean? So you may say be viewing a relationship with somebody uh -huh. and your perception of the relationship is changing. 
over okay. time because you're moving up or down the spring. And if you act while your perception is changing, ah. you're not seeing the truth. And you will make a yeah. false decision if you act or say something based upon the misperception you have. Yes, absolutely. That has happened many times in the past. And I have been recognizing it recently more, especially in relationships. Um, if things weren't going my way or I think I'm being mistreated or blah, 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 I would have used to be quick to just go. Now I'm just like, let's just hold on a second and, you know, make sure I'm not making an impulsive decision. And so I could totally relate to that. So the idea is to hang on and see, well, what's really going on here? Yeah. Maximum height and therefore maximum objectivity and you'll make a wise decision. So you're here to learn wisdom through force action. And the purpose of learning the wisdom is so you can share it with others, which is this is sharing the knowledge here, the force. Okay. Which is why you're doing this show, for example. So, and the nine here is a generational trauma we talked about a bit earlier. Nice. There's this in spiritual goals. There's a dragon here. And this dragon. You said dragon? It's a dragon energy, the most powerful energy in the chart. So there's great power in you, but it has been misused in past lives. So there can be a resistance to letting your power out. Okay. Because there's a fear in the ego that if I let it out, I'll destroy myself or those around me or both. Does that sound familiar? And I won't trust my own power. I won't trust my channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It does. So you're processing. Well, this is indicating you're an emotional processing unit. You're malabsorbing generational trauma here as well. And you're processing all your ancestors' unresolved stuff. Because you're the sensitive conscious one. And this is part of that stuff here. So the idea is to trust your inner gut feel what comes to you first. Okay. Trust your channel and step by step gradually claim your power back. Okay. And then use this as, as it turns, as the dragon is released from the cage, use it as energy to catalyze others to awaken. Okay. That's the job. So the product of working on all these six outer aspects here is the soul destiny seven. And the seven is what we call link which unites. We were talking about this before we started the show. So there's a heart wound that's happened from the separation of mother and father God represented by your parents and from the generational trauma here. It may have manifested a disempowerment or abuse, mistreatment at home or school or work. So there's an inner child that got wounded who's gone and hidden away because he's, he's scared that if everyone sees the true me, they'll reject me. It's very shame based. Okay, it believes it's it's not it's not worthy of attention or love, so it puts out a facade. Say, look at my facade, look at my mask, so you don't find the true me because I don't want to be rejected again. I couldn't handle that because this part believes it's inherently bad because of what's happened, and so the job is to release this facade, heal this inner child. Usually the less than two years old emotionally and just have them come out in the world as one person who shows true self. Okay. That sound familiar? Yeah, yeah, very much so. So the idea of that is to show your true self and then you'll magnetize like-minded people. I mean, you're doing that with us, the personality code. Show. You're networking thousands of people together like this um, and the critical way of, new way of doing this is, sh is sh show your authentic self because the paradox of this is that if you come out of hiding and show your true self open your heart in that process and heal and open it then that will magnetize to you like-minded people who will open their hearts around you and anyone who can't open their heart at that high frequency will have to leave the space so it's actually completely safe when you're authentic your authentic self that's the key Show your true self as you overcome the shame that happened. Okay, because often children blame themselves for the split of parents. It's just the way a child's mind works. So it's my fault this happened. And usually this is very subconscious when that happens. Mm -hmm. So your goal ultimately is to build networks of like-minded people, give spiritual service to them, share knowledge, 
bring pure truth to them, be a pioneer, work on the cutting edge, which is what you look for. Um, really interesting spiritual technologies. Give them emotional support and structure. Deliver to them exactly what they need in their growth and be a real catalyst for awakening. So that's the mission, Andrew. How's that sound? Sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> now you know, you can get on with it. You're already underway. Anyway. This, this, this clarifies, clarifies what the mission's about. Okay. Yeah. So wow. we only met one hour ago. So this is, I know more about you than your mother. <laughs> yeah, you do. That's powerful stuff. Wow. I like how it goes into each different aspect. Um, and it's, you know, it's going off of numbers too. And this is solely numbers. It's not using astrology or anything else. It's just, just numbers. astrology comes out of the system. Wait, because it's, it's Kabbalistic numerology. It comes, this comes out of the tree of life in the Kabbalistic tradition. This work. Okay. Yeah. But this, this was all just based off of numbers, right? Yeah. Based on the okay. sounds of your name. Yeah. I, I like that because I, I believe there's something interesting about math. There's something interesting about numbers that it's a universal language and it can that's what i really like about numerology um this is powerful nicholas thank you so much for this reading um a lot of things really connected a lot of things were um you know gain clarity i i do feel like i have been following my intuition a lot luckily and i have been noticing it's been aligning to to these readings but it this is giving me a, a deeper specific of kind of what's going on in my life currently and like how to stay true to that and i think a lot of it has to do with the jumping in without all the information just remembering to continue to do that that's like that's always that's always worked for me it's always been a, a, a it's always come out on top and it is getting more risky it is getting more um, real taking these risks. But like you said, I've done it before. I've gotten those results. Like it, it's fine. And it's remembering to continue to do that. Yep. Really. Okay. So, um, yeah, please. So um, we can move on to helping guys watching us find out what's in their chart. Okay, so let's do that. All right. Got to find the right um, diagram. Here it is. Okay, so. All right, so provided you've generated your chart using stockcontractreader.com, I'm going to go through the 22 numbers and explain what they mean very briefly in the time we've got left, okay? So this is a one, which is unity, power, and stability. So if you have a one in karma or goals, karma is like a teaching vision of goals, your learning is to become conscious of and transmute the misuse of power and the avoidance of your spiritual growth. And you need to do spiritual disciplines, especially like meditation, yoga, martial arts to do that. This is a very... This is a very um, summarized form of what this is about. Um, if you want to go deeper, uh, get the book, you also contract decoded, and that goes in the great depth what they mean. And if you overcome these karma and goals, you move to a place of unity, power, and stability. This is the divine masculine aspect of God. If you have a two in karma or goals, so it's the lack of resiliency. Symbol is actually like this. Actually looks like that. It's a spring moving up and down. Moving up and down like that. It's here to overcome lack of resiliency and to move from a place of foolishness to wisdom. And it's about trying to find balance in life. And once you've over transmuted it, it moves into it becomes like a talent. And if you have it in talents, it means you're emotionally resilient, you're very objective because you can sit on top of the spring up here and see what's really going on. Mm -hmm. 
if you have three, which is called the internal canal, it's about hiding away in the canal, being hidden and shy. There's a big plug of unworthiness in here. And it's about pulling out all this unworthiness to move to a place where you can communicate the deep soul knowledge within you. Teachers have these. That's what a three means. That's what the three is to become. Okay, so the Carmel goals becomes the talent or sorting the talent. It's all about communication. Four. Four is basically all about duplication. It's about taking one of these symbols and creating another one and another one to so create a flow. Okay. So it's about in karma or gold, it's about lack of trust in the flow. And so the way to bring that trust is to share, sharing of yourself with others, trusting in all aspects of life. So do, and then once it becomes a positive talent, it's about you know duplicate and share whatever comes to you. Because the more you share, the more will come to you. Okay. But the most important thing is not to overshare, although you're going to get exhausted from this. Has it happened with you, Andrew? You've overshared and feel like the tank was empty? It's happened, yeah. Yeah, so you got to pull back a little bit. So this is our swan <laughs> or, or a, um, it's like a fetus. It's like this. This is fives. So in um, our moral goals, it's the fear of speaking the truth or the misuse of the voice. Okay, because in the past there's been persecution for speaking the truth, usually being a witch, usually burned or tortured or whatever, for being um, speaking the truth. Overcoming that and learning to speak truth and learning to trust your intuition and its imbalance. Six here is about creativity. And when it's in um, when it's in karma and goals, it's a lack of focus, block creativity, rigidity, and anger. And as this unlocks, it's about moving to ability into a place of creativity and focus. It's about taking an idea that's resonant to you and in, in the mind and turning it into a physical manifest form in the world, which is creativity. Seven here. Link which unites. It's about trying to make a decision. We already talked about this in your example. Shall I show my true self or not? So it's about being indecisive around the fundamental nature of who, who you are. Okay, so it can mean that this hidden part wants to control everything so no one sees who you truly are. And it can be a place of dreamland and relationships. Have you found, Andrew, in your relationships that the person you're with turns out to be something different to what you initially perceive them to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's because because you were in this case you have a soul rest time you was um, seven. You had you hadn't made your mind up of who, of about who you were, therefore you're not going to know who anyone else is at all. So it's going to be what we call the dreamland filter. So until you open the heart and heal it and become one person and feel with your heart who that person is. You won't you won't know who anyone is truly. Okay. Once that's happened, the positive seven is about heart opening, being very objective, acting from the heart. And then it works. How are we doing so far? Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. This is the eight. This is a symbol of an amoeba. It's a little bit rounding on earth. So in, if it's in karma or goals, it's about being ungrounded, avoiding connection, unclear emotional boundaries. It's about someone who doesn't come to earth very often. And it's about um, learning to connect, come into the body, move out of the mind into feeling in the body and getting used to their heavy-duty, polarized emotional superbirth. And then learning to reach out to people 
and not get overly involved in their emotional issues. Because initially, eights and caramel girls don't have many bound, very good boundaries emotionally. And once you form clear boundaries, it moves to a place of being grounded and connecting with people. But you already have that if it's in talents, so we naturally part of you. The nine here is our dragon, we already mentioned. And they can be resistance to power because of fear of self or other people's destruction. If you're like a victim, you can have no boundaries. And overcoming that means becoming powerful, catalytic, trusting in the spirit. And if you already have it in talents, then you it's inherently within you to do that. The 10 here is um, it's the manifestation of God, really. Um, but in karma or goals, it is pretty much about um, denial of God and spirituality. It can be hard to meditate. How's your meditation, Andrew? It's not very good. Yeah, it's because of this. Because the ego doesn't want to connect to God, because it's trying mm -hmm. to it's trying to stay away from God. So it's about the misuse of power as well. And so and it takes a lot to overcome this one. And so it's a very powerful one. So it's very important to be grounded to overcome it, because the idea is it's the potential manifestation of spirit, dance, masculine, and feminine energies on earth to serve others and trusting in that energy. That's what it becomes if you overcome the karma goals or you already have it if it's in darkness. And so you, so you guys watching, don't feel ashamed if you feel you when you look at some of these that I've just talked about. It's not meant to punish you and nothing's gone wrong. It's an invitation to grow from your soul. It's what you it's what you do with this knowledge that matters. Okay, it's not about saying, oh, poor me, I've got this really tough pattern. It's only there because the soul believes that you have the ability. The fact you've even got to listen to this is telling you the soul's organized, saying, okay, I've told you what's going on, now go and do something about it. Okay, but you have a free will choice to change things now because you, you've got access to this particular show in the series. So this is our 11. In karma or goals, it's about a lack of structure, feeling lost, Dealing with life and death, emotionally and physically. Okay. And as you get st structure, then you have very good structures, either real physical ones, or you've got mental structures or bodies of knowledge, or emotional structures to serve others, to give them those structures so they can grow. 12 here. Well, here is about learning balanced expansion. Expand out into the world. Twelves are always in a rush. I've got a twelve. Always very busy. Twelves always want to expand, but barriers come up. So if you're getting barriers with your karmic or goal twelve, telling you to slow down, to expand in a balanced way. Because ultimately, it's about the absorption and expansion of love. Okay. Hmm. And taking knowledge to a higher level than communicating it to the world. 13 here is my favorite one. This is the divine feminine aspect of God. And in karma or goals, it can be a heart blockage to love, issues with the mother, an imbalanced relationship with the mother. And because of that lack of love, there can be a stone wall over the heart, it can lead to being self-indulgent, neglecting the needs of others because karmic or goal setting for the ego can feel, which is not you, the ego, the filter you're operating through can feel, is this not enough love for me? And if you overcome it here, opening to the feminine, not its aspects, then you move into the love of the unconditional love of the divine feminine, where you're feeling in your heart what is the next right action, your heart opens to it and you take action that works. But you Intend the action, thought and intent, emotionally intended out to the world, and just let it go and just trust it will come to pass. So you're probably wondering at this stage, okay, these numbers are really true. I need a bit more detail on this in terms of what, or what do we do about it? So if you want to go into deeper recommendations, or interpretations and recommendations, um, we've got that in the book, Your Soul Contract, decoded on Amazon, if you really want to go into it. 
it'll, it'll tell you in, in great depth what this is all about. So the 14 is called reflective being. And if it's in karma or goals, it's about learning self-acceptance through intense relational, intense relationships with people to the point of burnout emotionally. Because the mirroring effect, that intensity teaches you that parts of yourself you haven't seen, and vice versa. If you've got one of these, you may enjoy it, but most people can't handle the intensity, so they, you've got to give them a break. Okay, And if you find out who you are and chill out a bit, it's about the positive aspect of it is that you are a mirror for others, so they can multidimensional mirror for others, so they can discover who they are in your work with them. Okay? Either personal work or just professional work or both. The 15 here is called inner circular movement. So inner circle is an outer circle. Okay. And in karma or goals, it's about feeling insecure. Going around in circles, trying on lots of different things to find out where do I fit. And it's okay to have that. In Western culture, you know, we thought, okay, you've got to make your mind up when you're in your late teens. You know, get educated or get a profession or learn some trade. And stick with it for the rest of your life. Because what happens with 15s is they try one thing, oh, I'm feeling restless, insecure, move on to another one. A couple of years later, don't like this, do another one. So, and that's frowned upon in, in Western society. You've got to make your mind up and stay with it, be consistent. Being consistent, slave in the matrix. But a, a 15 will often be doing this up to mid 40s. And they find about that stage, if they've been doing this journey, I found a place where I feel secure and happy. I'm in my happy place. I found the God within my right place. And they settle down and get on with life. Okay, so it's okay to go on the restless journey. Because when you get to that point, you will feel God within and it'll be a, it'll be a happy place. If it's already in talents, then you can feel right to what's right for you anyway. Okay. It's a it's a gentle journey to find God. 16 here. It's about bringing spiritual energy down to the earth plane then sharing them in the world in plain English. Initially in karma or goals, it's a refusal to accept that spirituality. Okay, but Once you do, and you allow it to process through you, through your heart, then you bring it into the world. So taking high-level spiritual concepts and expressing them in plain English. The 17 here is like a symbolic mouth, like the mouth of God. In karma or goals, it can be suppressed emotional expression, the inability to relate. As you overcome that, okay, it can be about expression in society in a very grounded way. Reach people, to carry the word of God. 18, in karma, the learning is to take all this past life experience and you reach a point where you have to make a decision. Shall I follow the path of God or the path of the ego? And trying to trying to do lots of research to make the right decision. But the main thing to learn with this is you've got to make a decision based upon what you have, which will always be less than you'd like. Okay, so it's choosing to follow spirit. That's the learning here. If you would have it in talents, then you're good at doing that. 19 here. Nineteen is learning to bring the karma goals. Okay, it's learning to bring spiritual energies. Okay, to the earth plane and creating a form out of it, which others are learning to are here to come into and um, learn about learn about how to receive healing and uh, achieve their goals in life. Okay, but if it's in karma goals, what happens initially is that it basically staying in the spiritual the physical energies and misusing the spiritual energies that come in because you can't form the box you can't form the space okay. 20. 20 is about great movement it's about great movement here 
So in karma, it's about being exposed to rigid belief systems, especially say Catholicism, for example, or rigid, rigid uh, spiritual belief system. And it's learning to learn to move and explore new belief systems. So the positive ability is to be able to move and explore the world physically and spiritually. 21 here is all about the Divine Mother energy. In karma or goals, it's going to be like a big boulder. The energy is very stuck in us. Okay, that's energy. And it's about someone who does things the hard way. It's about overcoming that blocked energy and getting these energies moving. So you have the power that a woman has when she gives birth. One can spend three days giving birth and have that enormous strength to get through it. And once it's in talents, it's the ability to endure and overcome big challenges and hardships. It takes quite a while. And finally, our 22 again. Yeah. If it's in karma, it's about complete disconnection from source. And it's about seek, burning through that disconnect within the ego. So you can connect to source and blend mind, body, and soul in the circle of God. And so it's in talents, it's about completion, a complete reconnection to source, delivering in completeness what any, whatever anyone needs. Okay. So you should be able to work out the basics of your chart from there. Um, people, I hope that helps and give you some clarity on life. And if you want to know more, um, check out yoursoulcontractdecoded.com find out more about the book. Um, if you feel that you don't want to go through that, it takes a while, there are other options here. And to try and give you some tools to find out who you are and what have we got here. Oh yeah, we have a thing called yoursoulcontractreport.com. If you want a, if you want a summary, a quick summary of your chart, go to yoursoulcontractdecoded.com and you can get a summary report one pager. If you really want the rest of it, the whole lot of it, you can get a full report here, and that gives you up to 140 pages based upon the book, Your Soul Contract Decoded. Okay, so go to yoursoulcontractreport.com, and the, and the um, software will actually, on that site, will actually produce a report based upon the book, so you can spend your time reading and understanding it uh, if you don't want to go through the whole book. Um, and if you uh, want to go further than that, you can learn how to do this work. There's soulcontractreadingtraining.com. You can learn to be a practitioner who actually um, learns how to give readings, just like I gave Andrew a very short reading. You can learn how to do it yourself as well. But if you just go to the go to the website or anywhere on this website, this goes to the right page for the training. But you can also find you can get sessions as well. If you just want to receive a reading, one of our practitioners can give those to you as well. Okay, so there's many different ways of finding out your personality code through this work, depending on what what grabs you. Okay, it's so, beautiful. So this is how Thank you, you so much grow in consciousness, guys, and stop wasting time doing things which aren't working and get on with the good stuff. Stop being a gray and start being a color full yep. person. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was that was wow. Super deep. Super intense. Revealed so much. I mean, I definitely am going to be re-watching this and looking back on the chart. And thank you for going into each depth so people that they can get your chart. You guys can, you know, kind of get a taste on your own. But what I always say is, you know, I have each expert to help you with your aligned path. So 100% reach out to Nicholas. You have all of his information down below. Now, I know you, before we, we start closing out here, I know you have a free gift and we would love to know what that is. Yeah, I sort of mentioned it briefly during the reading. So you can um, go to soulcontractreader.com, which produces your free chart, and then watch the last Perfect. last third of the video, and then you'll find out what it means. Beautiful. And and then and as I said, if you want to if you, if you want to go to greater depth, just get the book, and your soul contract um, decoded. Go to yourselfcontractdecoded.com. You can get the book there on Amazon. It talks about how that works. That goes into great depth about what each number means. 
if you are feeling like, oh, I don't want to read, I don't want to go through that. I want to just press a button, which a lot of people say, just go to yoursoulcontractreports.com and you enter your name and um, you can purchase a one pager or 140 page reading and then it just gets sent to you within seven days by our guys. We do it manually um, based upon the book. Um, that's the other way to get it. Okay, so that's how you can find out what your life is all about, people. Beautiful. Thank you so much. You guys heard it. So you see that big button down below. Go ahead and click that. You get access to the free gift and all of other all of his other information down below. I highly recommend getting your chart read. This one was super profound, super in depth. Uh, it's really connected a lot of dots uh, and brought a lot of systems together. So thank you so much for doing this amazing chart read i'm super grateful i know everyone is super grateful that you went so in depth and i know a lot of people will be reaching out and, and connecting with you so thank you thanks for having me andrew it's been, of course. It's been fun yeah and everyone else i know that you guys learned a lot i know i learned so much i mean there's certain things that he was saying that i like took me some digging to really find i was just there on the chart so um, like I said, reach out this, this one, I'm highly recommending you guys check out, get your reading, um, and stay tuned. I have a lot of other experts hopping on here and helping you decode and understand your authentic self. So you can live out your soul contracts purpose here. So <laughs> thanks so much for uh, tuning in you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay. Thanks, Andrew.